Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Los Angeles County Metro Area Plan Introductory Workshop. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to take a moment to let people settle in and then we'll get started. Please do note the meeting is being recorded and will be made available on the project website, which we'll be sharing with you on a future slide. Bienvenido al taller introductorio del plan del área metropolitana del condado de Los Ángeles. Gracias por acompañarnos. Vamos a tomarnos un momento para que la gente se acomode y luego comenzaremos. Tengan en cuenta que esta reunión se está grabando y estará disponible en el sitio web del proyecto. Hi everyone, welcome to the Los Angeles County Metro Area Plan Introductory Workshop. Thank you for joining us today. And we're just giving it a minute or so as people are settling in and we'll get started. Please do note this meeting is being recorded and will be made available on the project website, which we will share with you in another slide. Bienvenido al taller introductorio del plan del área metropolitana del condado de Los Ángeles. Gracias por acompañarnos. Vamos a tomarnos unos momentos más, como un minuto o dos, para que la gente se acomode y luego comenzaremos. Tengan en cuenta que esta reunión se está grabando y estará disponible en el sitio web del proyecto. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Next slide, please. So language support is available. To listen to this presentation in Spanish, please click on the globe symbol at the bottom of your screen. El soporte de idiomas está disponible. Si desea escuchar esta presentación en español, haga clic en el símbolo del globo en la las partes inferior de su pantalla. I also wanted to mention that we have here today Marina Sarache Ferrero providing Spanish translation in the Spanish Zoom channel. And if you have any technical difficulties getting to the Spanish channel, please use the Q&A box to let us know. Hoy tenemos aquí a Marina Soros Ferrero Ferreo, brindando traducción en, al español en el canal de Zoom en español. Si tiene alguna dificultad técnica para acceder al canal en español, 
Utilice el cuadro de preguntas y respuestas para hacérnoslo saber. Okay, and before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Please note that everyone joining the meeting is muted by default. And we have a few options to participate in today's meeting. Uh, as shown on the slide, you may use the raised hand feature and then we will go ahead and unmute you and you can speak. Um, or you may use the Q&A tool to submit any questions you have. After clicking the Q&A icon, you type your message into the box in the, uh, in the bottom right. Mientras esperamos para iniciar, se darán cuenta que todos están silenciados durante la presentación. Si desea hablar, utilice la función de levantar la mano y también puede usar el botón de chat para enviar preguntas y respuestas en cualquier momento si prefiere no hablar en voz alta. Okay, and then we'll begin with just some brief introductions. My name is Asha Blyer. I'm a member of the DUDEC consultant team collaborating with the Los Angeles County Department of Regional Planning on this project. Um, and I have here today from the DUDEC team, Gaurav Srivastava and Janet Rodriguez. And as you can see here on the slide from the Los Angeles County Department of Regional Planning, we have Patricia Achia, Tina Fung, and Tahira Ferris. And I'm just gonna take a minute for each of them to say a quick hello. Hi everybody, thanks for taking time for this meeting today. Hi everyone, this is Tina with um, County Regional Planning. Nice meeting you all tonight. Hi, this is Tahira Ferris also with Regional Planning. And nice to meet everyone tonight as well. Great, thank you all. Okay, so um, now that you know a little bit of, about us and who we are, um, we would like to get to know you. Um, we're going to do a brief poll in just a minute here. And it's going to, um, it's gonna pop up and it's gonna ask you the question, which community are you a resident of? So you should see the poll now in front of you and we welcome your participation. I'm seeing the results come in. Um, and as you're participating in this poll, I wanted to also send a quick reminder that at the close of the workshop, the county would um, really love for you to also participate in a brief exit survey. So we'll have that at the very end of the presentation. So we're seeing here a good amount of participation. We'll just give it another couple seconds here. A few more people. Okay, great. Uh, let's go ahead and close the poll and then we'll share the results. So as you can see here, uh, about half of the participants are from East Los Angeles, um, almost 30% from Florence Firestone, around 7% from East Rancho Dominguez, another 7% from West Athens Westmont. Okay. Well, great to have you all with us. Thanks again for joining. So now we're gonna go ahead and play our um, presentation for you. And then at the close, at the end of our presentation, we'll be opening up for Q and A.
Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this introductory workshop for Los Angeles County's Metro Area Plan. Over the next 20 minutes, we will provide you with an overview of the plan, discuss its objectives, and highlight the opportunities you will have to provide input to shape its recommendations. The Metro Area Plan is being prepared by the Department of Regional Planning of the County of Los Angeles. Let us first set the planning area in a geographic context. Los Angeles County is the nation's most populous county with over 10 million residents. It covers an area that extends from the Antelope and Santa Clarita Valleys to the Palos Verdes Peninsula and from Santa Monica to the San Gabriel Valley. There are 88 incorporated cities in the county. These cities are individually responsible for planning and regulating development within their jurisdictions. However, not all areas in the county lie within these 88 cities. The areas that are not within the cities are referred to as unincorporated areas. Los Angeles County, via the Department of Regional Planning, is responsible for planning and regulating development in unincorporated areas. To effectively plan and regulate development in unincorporated areas across such a large geography, Los Angeles County adopted a planning framework in 2015. This identified 11 planning areas across the county. The Metro Area Plan is one of the 11 planning areas in Los Angeles County. It occupies the urban core of the Los Angeles metropolitan region and includes both incorporated as well as unincorporated areas. The incorporated areas lie within the cities of Los Angeles and Compton. There are seven unincorporated communities within the metro area plan. West Athens, Westmont, West Rancho Dominguez, Victoria, Willowbrook, East Rancho Dominguez, Walnut Park, Florence Firestone, and East Los Angeles. These seven communities will be the focus of the Metro Area Plan. It is estimated that about 310,000 residents, approximately 3% of the county's population, live in the seven communities. About 84% are of Hispanic origin. For comparison, about half of the countywide population is of Hispanic origin. There are about 55,000 jobs across the seven communities, slightly over 1% of all jobs in the county. The median household income is about $50,000. The county's median household income is about $75,000. The seven unincorporated communities of the metro planning area are emblematic of the diversity of Southern California. Each has played a role in crafting the unique cultural landscape and identity of Los Angeles. East Los Angeles is located east of Los Angeles Boyle Heights neighborhood and adjacent to the cities of Monterey Park, Montebello and Commerce. East Los Angeles is the birthplace of the Chicano art and political movements and continues to influence and shape their broader identities. It is the most populous of the seven metro area communities with a population of about 126,000 residents, 97% of who identify as being of Hispanic origin. There are about 23,000 jobs in East Los Angeles. East Los Angeles is served by the L line of LA County's Metro Light Rail Network, multiple freeways, the 10, 710, 5, and 60 provide access, but also dissect the community. Florence Firestone is located south of downtown Los Angeles and generally lies east of Central Avenue and west of Alameda Street. The community is home to about 65,000 residents, 91% of Hispanic origin. 
the community is presently the subject of an ongoing transit-oriented development, or TOD, specific plan for three stations along Metro's A-Line. The area with over 7,400 jobs has its origins in the industrial uses that developed along its rail corridor, including since closed factories of tire companies like Goodyear and Firestone. Walnut Park is a small residential neighborhood adjacent to Florence Firestone and the city of Huntington Park. It has about 16,000 residents and 1,000 jobs. About 98% of its residents are of Hispanic origin. The community is traversed by Pacific Boulevard, one of the region's most iconic retail corridors. East Rancho Dominguez is located in the southwest of the metro planning area. It lies west of the 710 freeway and adjacent to the cities of Compton and Paramount. It is home to approximately 15,000 residents and 700 jobs. The community is served by a county park where two legends of tennis, Venus and Serena Williams, began their tennis careers as children playing at the courts of East Rancho Dominguez Park. Willowbrook is a predominantly residential community with visible remnants of its rural history. Horse trails and backyard farms remain integral to its identity. It is located in between the cities of Los Angeles and Compton and has approximately 21,000 residents and 3,300 jobs. The community is home to significant regional asset, including the Martin Luther King Jr. Hospital, and the Willowbrook Rosa Parks Metro Station, a major transit hub at the junction of the A and C line. West Rancho Dominguez, Victoria is a community of about 22,000 residents located in the southeast of the metro area, adjacent to Compton and Gardena. Providing over 15,000 local jobs, it serves as an industrial hub for the South Bay area of Los Angeles. Irvin Magic Johnson Park is a major asset to the community. It has been recently improved to address water quality, biodiversity, and provide a safe and sustainable recreational amenity. West Athens Westmont is located west of the 110 freeway adjacent to the cities of Inglewood, Gardena, and Los Angeles. It is home to about 41,000 residents and 3,800 jobs. Los Angeles Southwest College is located in the community with an enrollment of over 8,000 students. West Athens Westmont also has played a significant role in the county's civil rights movement. Known as one of the first public courses to desegregate, Chester Washington Golf Course kick-started the desegregation of golf courses throughout Los Angeles County, which set in motion a countywide overhaul of segregationist policies. The seven communities of the Metro Area Plan currently are subject to numerous, often overlapping policies and regulations. Some plans, like the Community Plan for East Los Angeles and the Neighborhood Plan for Walnut Park, date to the 1980s. Others, like the Transit-Oriented Specific Plans for Willowbrook and West Athens Westmont, were recently adopted. Florence Firestone is currently preparing its own Transit-Oriented Specific Plan. The purpose of these documents is to establish land use policy and implement it via zoning and development standards. What is land use policy? At its simplest, it designates where to allow various kinds of uses and activities, such as homes, shops, factories, and parks, as shown on this map by different colors. A land use plan ultimately reflects a community's priorities for what it aspires to be. 
For example, a land use plan that sets aside 90% of its land area for industrial use is very different from one that sets aside 90% for residential use. What is zoning? Zoning and development standards implement a community's land use policy. They provide the rules for how individual developments are built, how tall, how big, how much parking, how much yard space, and the like. Together, land use plans and zoning codes serve as a blueprint for how a community grows and develops over time. There is, however, a cautionary note with respect to land use and zoning. While they are understood to be regulatory tools that promote the health and safety of a community, their origins are also associated with racial and class segregation that go back a century. Land use plans of today strongly correlate to red lines maps of last century. These maps explicitly discriminated against racial and ethnic minorities and established segregated neighborhoods, which are still visible today. Now that we are in a new age of planning, we hope to use the Metro Area Plan project to correct some of the past mistakes made in land use decisions. And we are looking for your input to do that work. A primary goal of the Metro Area Plan is to update existing land use policies to address community needs. To simplify and streamline zoning rules, it will aim to consolidate regulations that currently exist across multiple plans. In evaluating existing land use and zoning, the Metro Area Plan will prioritize issues that are central to the lives of the community members. First and foremost, it will utilize an environmental justice and equity lens to evaluate all recommendations, recognizing that the seven communities have historically been disadvantaged via past planning decisions. Additionally, the plan will address the need for affordable housing, analyze the suitability of new housing in proximity to transit stops, and carefully study potential residential displacement. It will also implement zoning recommendations from the countywide housing element. With regards to transportation, the plan will focus on safety for bicyclists and pedestrians, this will build on the pedestrian planning work that is being conducted by the county's Department of Public Health. Parking needs for various uses will also be studied. The plan will also look at opportunities for economic development and new green spaces. It will seek out special places and landmarks that are locally significant to the community and recommend ways to preserve and celebrate them. This is a preliminary list of priorities and we're requesting that you help us expand it by providing your input today. The Metro Area Plan is scheduled for adoption in June of 2023. Over the course of the next 20 months, we will provide multiple opportunities for you to provide input. Round one workshops, starting with today's introductory workshop, will occur over the next couple of weeks. These are intended to serve as a forum for your aspirations and your visions. Additional details about workshops for specific communities are on the next slide. Round two workshops will occur in the spring of 2022 and will provide you with an opportunity to weigh in on draft plan recommendations. Additionally, public hearings at the Regional Planning Commission are scheduled for October and November of 2022. Public hearings at the Board of Supervisor are scheduled for February and June of 2023. Round one visioning workshops will be conducted over a two week period starting November 8. This table provides the dates for each community's workshop. All round one workshops will be conducted online from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. on the dates indicated. In order to participate, please pre-register. Details are provided on our website, planning.lacounty.gov forward slash metro area plan. 
We will also post the link in the Q&A window. We will now open up for questions and comments. Shown here are a few questions that might help shape your input tonight. What are the most important issues that you want the Metro Area Plan to address? What would you like us to keep in mind as we begin our analysis? What can we do better to understand and learn about your community? This concludes our overview presentation. Thank you and we look forward to hearing from you. Hi everyone, thanks for listening to our presentation. Um, now comes the good part. We're really excited to hear from you on your input. Um, just a reminder uh, that you can, you can use the raised hand feature if you'd like to verbally express your comments. Uh, we'll go ahead and unmute you. Or you can always use the Q&A tool. You just go ahead and um, click the Q&A icon. It should be at the bottom of your screen. And then you type your message into the box. And then again, just um, we wanted to provide some questions for consideration, but um, feel free to share, you know, what, whatever information you would like. Um, just again, briefly, those those questions are, you know, what are the most important issues that you want this metro area plan project to address? What would you like us to keep in mind as we begin our analysis? And um, we're really at the very early stages of the planning process, so um, we welcome all your your input and feedback. And what can we do to better understand and learn about your community? Um, you heard a little bit about um, what we've started to learn about the seven different communities to date and would love to get um, more input on that. Okay, so with that, um, I see a few hands raised. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those first. Um, Sonia Roman, hopefully I said that correctly. You should be able to. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Hi, my name is Sonia and I'm from the East Los Angeles City Terrace area and also part of a Vision City Terrace group that is about, you know, having and advocating for resource in our community. My big concern here is East LA is a large population. And there are many that don't have access to internet, social media. I am one of the lucky ones, but how would you get to know the input of those that don't have access to social media in your outreach? I, you know, I'm just, I just, I know this is the beginning, but I think there's a lot of improvement for outreach in all the other seven communities because other communities don't even have any participants today. And uh, my, my, my concern here is, uh, a lot, of, a lot of our industrial areas are being, um, they have a lot of businesses that are, are not following regulations and just, you know, so making sure that part of your plan also enforces, has a team to enforce of what could be in the industrial areas because we have so much air pollution in LA. Thank you and um, I'll, I'll end it here. Really great feedback. Thank you so much, Sonia. Um, and, and as you mentioned, you know, we are the very, very early stages um, of our outreach process. We plan to do a really robust um, outreach and community engagement plan. And um, with that, I don't know if um, Gaurav or one of the county representatives would like to speak a little bit more to the future steps. Sure. Gaurav, you wanna go first and then I'll say uh, something? Sure, thank you, Pat. Um, Sonia, thank you for your question. Again, my name is Gaurav Srivastav. I'm with the consultant team and I'm helping manage the preparation of the plan. Um, so first of all, I want to thank you and everyone else on the call today who's participating. Um, public input is what makes plans successful and we strive really hard to maximize and broaden the kind of input we get. The issue you raised regarding online only workshops and how we might be missing out on some input, we acknowledge that, that is a real concern. The reality that we're currently living in with uh, the public health guidelines, which hopefully are uh, slowly getting relaxed, has forced us, at least for this round of workshops, to adopt uh, online only. But having said that, I and there will be a slide that we will share with you later in the presentation for 
upcoming in-person input opportunities. Um, we are partnering with the County of Public Health to be in person and present at four workshops that are coming up over the next couple of weeks. We will provide you the details to do that. Um, we have also partnered with some of your community members across all seven plan areas to physically and in person distribute hard copy flyers. Uh, we know that not everyone has access to the internet. So we have identified individuals who could help distribute and also post the meeting information at uh, community hubs and community centers. Um, we recognize that we might miss some people, so which is why we have a second round of workshop that we will conduct in spring of next year. And those workshops, um, fingers crossed, touch wood, are likely to be in person and will provide multiple opportunities across all seven communities for us to directly engage community members and to get their feedback. Um, and I'll stop there, Pat. Yeah, I think um, also we, uh, we've we been working on putting together um, a survey that we're looking to distribute um, hard copies of um, at the events that uh, Gaurav talked about where we're partnering up with public health and we are relying on community members to help us distribute this information and collect. So um, we are looking for partners. And if you are interested in helping us distribute and collect that information, um, please go ahead and put your email in the chat and mention that you're interested. And we'll reach out to you to help to discuss opportunities to distribute information and, and collect information as well. We're, we're trying to be very creative, but do, do it in a safe manner. Great, thank you both. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take Felix Robles next. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Um, I, uh, me personally, the, the, the biggest concern is that the East Los Angeles area is such a large area um, I'm also part of the Vision City Terrorist Group, and uh, wondering if it would be possible if, when there's references to city terrorists specifically, that would be designated as such, as opposed to just saying East Los Angeles. Thank you for that comment, Felix. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us as well? Yeah, um, I live on the border of, of uh, the industrial area. And the biggest issue with me is that I'm affected by a lot of the pollution uh, that is being caused here. So hopefully there, there could be a lot more green spaces implemented in this area uh, because right now it's just a concrete jungle right here. Great recommendation, thank you. We appreciate it. Okay. Um, anything else, Felix? Uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful feedback. We appreciate that. Thank you. I hope you'll continue to participate with us in the planning process. Um, okay. I'm going to go to Erica Barbero next. Erica, you should be able to unmute yourself. Hi. Good evening. Uh, my name is Erica, and I'm from the Westmont Athens area. Um, I have several. Um, things or points I'd like to bring up um, for you all as you do this, this work. Um, so the Westmont Athens area, as you probably know or don't know, we're very close to the SoFi Stadium and the SpaceX company. And we've been seeing an increase of traffic uh, in the area, um, especially for those who don't want to pay for parking fees going to the SoFi Stadium. Um, so that's one I would, I'm very curious to know what um, plans are, or what considerations are being put forward to, you know, med, uh, mediate this issue. Um, in addition, I, you know, I live right over the flight path of LAX. Um, so, of course, sound is a concern, um, as well as, in, you know, uh, pollution from the airplanes. I know, like, we don't smell it, you know, right away, but, you know, long term, I, I know it's, it's an issue. So I also want to know what you all are planning to do um, 
to you know mediate that or any plans to incorporate more green space or to clean the air and then finally you know what other methods of transportation are going to be provided i know you did mention cycling and you know myself work former educator who worked in the area a lot of our students rode bikes and unfortunately luckily it wasn't my students but unfortunately we did see a lot of deaths um from from those who had no choice but to take their bikes to and from their destination um so what are you all planning to do to partner with the city of los angeles um to create like a you know sustainable um you know efficient bicycle um, alternative for the for the residents um, and I'm sp speaking specifically to the Manchester Vermont area where it's you know right at the border of, of Westmont Athens and the city of Los Angeles um, so thank you that those are the things that I wanted to bring up Erica those are really excellent points and and we also really appreciate the specificity I mean the more information that you can give and uh, really the better that we can look into it and really explore those opportunities through the planning process um, Pat or Gaurav, did you have anything to add on that before I go to the written questions? I can say something real quick. Um, I think we will be looking at um, parking issues in the community and also um, the bike collision um, issue where one of the partnering departments is the County Department of Public Works and they um, are looking at um, a project, it's a project called Vision Zero and they're looking at traffic accidents, especially when it um, occurs, you know, as it relates to pedestrians and bicyclists. And they're also in the process of starting to update what they call the bicycle master plan. So as that starts rolling out, we'll give you more information about that, but we'll be talking to them um, using your input and, and looking for opportunities and you'll get more details as we um, talk more with them. Um, that's interesting what you said about the SoFi Stadium and the parking issue related from that. I know that's a new, very becoming more and more popular use, but um, that's that's very specific input and we'll, we'll definitely be looking into um, that as it relates to parking. Great, thank you for that feedback. I'm gonna pivot to some of these um, questions in the Q&A box and then I'll go back to the raised hands. Um, so I have one comment. Hello, thank you for the presentation. I am a little confused. What can the metro area plan accomplish? Is it something that can be enforced or is, this a, is it a set of guidelines? Um, so that's a good question. Thank you for asking that. Um, we are hopeful that the, this metro area plan can accomplish quite a lot. We're very optimistic about it. Um, it's going to include, as we mentioned before, um, kind of relative to land use policy, zoning. Um, this is gonna be a plan that can be enforced that can be implemented um, we're planning the plan is um, will would be uh, adopted at the end of the the road should the decision makers um, agree to do so so um, and with that uh, I'll hand it over to um, Pat or Gaurav if you have anything to add on that yeah I, I I can add just a little bit more Asha so I I think just to clarify what the metro area plan um, can and cannot do. So the metro area plan at its core will establish land use policies for these seven unincorporated communities that it's looking at. And what that means is as the presentation previously described is it allows and sets regulations for what kinds of uses can go on which parcels within these areas, jobs, homes, shops. Uh, in addition to setting land use policy, the metro area plan will put in place the rules um, the zoning code, the development standards that determine the shape of development that occurs in these communities. So at the end of the day, it is a very powerful tool that the county has to shape the built form and character of these communities. And the recommendations that emerge from the metro area plan will be influenced, informed, and shaped by the input that we hear from the community starting with meetings like this one tonight. Excellent, thank you, Gaurav. Okay, and I'll take a couple more questions from the Q&A and then I'll get back to the raised hands. Um, I think it would be important for the plan to explicitly acknowledge the racist policies that have affected the unincorporated areas of Los Angeles and still perpetuate health, 
education and environmental in inequities. Thank you very much for that um, important comment and feedback. Um, I'll take a pause and see if uh, anyone else on the team wants to comment on that. Um, I, 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 I might defer to Pat because I know Pat has spent a lot of time in shaping the planning principles that go into the metro area plan. And I just want to reinforce and validate this comment that one of the core approaches that we will be utilizing is to evaluate, assess the land use policies that have shaped these communities, the origins of those land use policies, and what can the metro area plan do to slowly start dismantling this framework that has been in place for, for close to 100 years now. So this is, I'm going to show my face while I talk, actually. Um, this is Tina Thong with the um, Department of Regional Planning. So um, I just want to also mention um, a larger effort that the County of um, Board of Supervisor um, has recently started um, in regards to equity. Um, so the county um, last I think last summer, so July of 2020, the Board of Supervisors adopted um, what it's called uh, anti-racism agenda and established a formal anti-racism diversity and inclusion initiative. Um, it's a very long name, but the, the acronym is RD. And so um, this is sort of like the county's way to um, look at equity and you know, sort of the, like you were saying, a lot of the policies um, historically, not just land use, but many other aspects of, I guess, um, policy decisions were, were made, um, you know, not in an equitable way and, and, and racist. And so um, the county, um, the board started this effort last year. And so many um, county departments are, are um, sort of like the partners in this effort. And um, to tie this back to sort of the planning department's um, work, including the metro area plan, but also other things like the housing element, um, the goal obviously is to, um, you know, look back at the um, existing land use policies, um, you know, how, you know, they were created and then what can be done to make sure that we correct course. Um, so this is a very, very good point. And I just want to sort of bring it up to attention that um, this issue obviously goes beyond um, land use policy. And in order to address it in a very comprehensive and, and uh, all encompassing manner, um, I'm glad that the board actually started this effort last year. And so as part of this project, we'll make sure that um, we'll also, you know, look at the um, proposed policies and regulations through the equity lands as well. Um, and um, I don't know if Pat, you want to add anything else um, or Tahira. Okay, uh, Tina, it looks like you did a great job. So I think you covered it. Um, thank you for that. I think it's really um, wonderful to hear, um, you know, that that's happening. Uh, at the high level and that um, really the importance of, of this plan. And thank you again for that, that comment. Uh, we really appreciate it. And I know that um, some of these uh, questions in the Q&A box uh, were answering in writing as well. Um, so you can go ahead and open the box and click, um, you, you should be able to see the questions and the answers. Um, some of which we've answered live and some have typed answers so you can see those. Um, and they will be available through um, the recording that will be made available on the project website as well. I'm going to go back to some of the raised hands now. Clara Solis, you should be able to unmute yourself. Go ahead. Hi, um, a few things I wanted to bring up. Uh, I think uh, Alberto Caracosa also brought this up that East Los Angeles, um, because its proximity to four major freeways, the Pomona, the 710, and the 60, um, the 10, uh, I, the five, I forgot one. <laughs> it gets a lot of traffic and it, 
cannot control this because it gets passed through traffic that goes through the community. And I think you need to keep that this in mind as you develop your policies. The residents in East Los Angeles have no control over this enormous amount of traffic that goes through the community. And when traffic overflows and it gets busy on these freeways, the traffic exits through the community. Um, Metro also has caused parking problems through its policies. It prom makes promises all the time, uh, like it's going to provide parking through its metro station. It's going to be free. And then you change your policy and start charging for your parking. And then the people who use the metro come to East Los Angeles and park on its streets. Um, also, regarding racism, the whole a transit oriented communities is racist. I mean, where is transit mostly found? A lot of times it's found in, in um, communities of color. And so when you use these, these policies to make these areas more dense, it impacts these communities like parking, like Alberto brought up. Um, there's not enough parking. Um, cars, if you look at the numbers of cars, they've increased, you know, um, and people, they make these transit oriented communities projects and you expect that people are going to just use transit, but that's not what's happening, where it's become really hard for people to move around the city at times if there's an accident somewhere people can't even move um they they have to leave their cars to walk home you know so so i think those are two of the things those are a few of the things i'd like you to consider thank you thank you clara we appreciate that feedback um did anyone want to make any remarks before i call on the next hand Okay. I see here Sinetta T. Farley or Fairley. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. You should be able to unmute yourself. Hi, my name is Sinetta Farley. Uh, I'm uh, right now serving as president of, not president, I'm sorry, uh, as uh, serving as vice president of East Rancho Dominguez Neighborhood Association. Uh, we are a nonprofit. Uh, we've been organized over 10 years. And um, we have some major problems and I hope that, well, first of all, let me uh, congratulate the uh, congratulate you for uh, reaching out to the community. Uh, so so often uh, it's like uh, with the county it's been after this, after the fact. And so I'm very happy that you all want our input. Um, many of the things that you, uh, that you mentioned in your, uh, uh, introduction uh, and uh, a great, but my concern is that how will the local community such as our, uh, the census says it's uh, 15,000 people in East Rancho Dominguez, Dominguez is more like 20 or 25,000 uh, people here. And uh, when you talk about uh, Parking, parking is a problem for every, every, almost on every residential street, uh, and that's that's because we have uh, we have so many people, and uh, each household has more than one car, so uh, we have we have that as a major uh, problem in our community right now, and. Not only that, other things like speeding and donut. And I think I said this to another commu uh, committee I was on. But hopefully, the major the the major concern that I have is that um, 
whatever plans are developed, they are really developed with an in-depth uh, look at what East Rancho Dominguez uh, needs and with the input of our community. Uh, because if we don't do it that way, um, then we are going to miss the opportunity of resolving a lot of the issues, uh, not only in East Rancho Dominguez, but probably in other communities also. So the, the, the participation of the residents and business in each one of these communities is very crucial. Uh, Thank you so I, much, Benetta. Yeah. And so I hope that you will uh, you will um, really look at that and allow uh, our participation to really be be a part of not only writing it down but part of the implementation uh, of uh, of all the new uh, the changes that will take place. Uh, I'm a very critical activist of uh, of the county. I love well, working you. with the county. But well, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sonetta. We really appreciate that feedback. And I think we're we're happy that you're with us today in the beginning of the stages. And I hope that you'll you'll stay with us and there's going to be a lot more opportunities to be involved in um, the vi upcoming visioning workshops and the survey um, just in the more near future. So um, we hope that you'll participate in those as well. And just to make sure that um, everybody gets um, a chance to have you know opportunity for questions answered. I'm going to go now to um, back to our Q and A box. It looks like I don't see any more raised hands, and I see that um, Pat would like to answer those questions. So I'll go ahead and read it and hand it over to Pat. Will the plan incorporate adding trees on streets to help with increasing temperatures due to climate change and freeway slash industrial pollution? Other unincorporated communities like Altadena have a large amount of trees. How is funding distributed to make this possible for the unincorporated communities in this plan? Thank you for um, that comment. I think um, that is something that we could put in as an implementation program. I think the key will be really figuring out where are the best places to um, put the trees and making sure that they will be maintained. Um, I, I know that um, in, in some communities, um, where we've done some pilot projects as the county, um, there's been um, some property owners actually don't want trees <laughs> near them because of the cost of tree maintenance. So um, I think that'll be something though that, that we definitely will take into consideration. Uh, climate change is something that we know is important and it will affect um, communities uh, all over LA County. And so um, trees are an integral part of of uh, providing um, some shading opportunities and just you know cleaner air. So trees are important to this discussion. And we appreciate this comment and the reminder that we definitely need to add that to our list. Thank you. Great, thank you, Pat. Um, and the next question, I also see I'm gonna punt it back to you, Pat. Um, thank you for answering the earlier question. One last clarification, does the measure area plan replace the community plan updates for specific areas like East LA, Westmont, et cetera, or community plan updates, or are the community plan updates separate from this metro area plan? Good question. Go ahead, Pat. Yeah, so Tina can also help answer this question if she'd you like. You know, I actually <laughs> answer a very similar question in the chat box just now, uh, and I actually type in the answer, but um, basically, um, let me explain a little bit about the relationship between the area plan and the community plans. So, um, but when we updated the countywide general plan in 2015, um, the general plan divided the county into 11 planning areas. And the goal is that um, to make sure that every community, because we have so many disconnected communities throughout the county, we want to make sure that every community gets the same um, uh, level of comprehensive planning, if you will. Um, and so the goal of the metro area plan is that if there are issues or visions um, or goals and policies that are shared by the communities within the metro planning area, then we can develop those goals and policies and make them into area-wide goals and policies or programs or regulations. However, if there are issues or 
visions that are very unique to a particular community within the metro planning area, then the existing community plans that you mentioned um, can become like a chapter of the metro area plan where we can then include um, more community focused or specific goals and policies or uh, implementation programs. Um, so in other words, the metro area plan is actually also an opportunity to update some of these older existing community plans um, that were adopted back in the 90s or the 80s, for example. Um, so that is kind of the relationship between the area plan and the existing community plans. Great, thank you, Tina. Um, next question. I think I saw that there will be a CAC or Community Advisory Committee for this Metro Area Plan. Could you provide more details on that? I'll take that, Asha. Um, hi, Anel, thanks for your question. Um, yes, you did see that right. There is a Community Advisory Committee for the Metro Area Plan. Um, uh, the the makeup of the CAC is we in trying to ensure that there is at least a representative from each of the seven communities. Um, some communities, depending on their geographic size, may have more than one representative. Um, we had a kickoff meeting a couple of weeks ago just to introduce the project similar to what we've done today to members of the CAC. The role of the CAC is really to help us receive input from uh, members as they represent the points of view and the interests of the communities they, they represent. Um, we are planning to have eight CAC meetings over the next 18 months. Um, most of these meetings will coincide with uh, upcoming community events, public events, and in advance of public hearings. Um, our CAC uh, membership list is not final yet. So if you are interested, or if you know anyone who is interested and wants to participate in the CAC, please let us know. I do want to say that we do want to limit the size of the CAC to um, probably 10 members or so, um, and we're not there yet. So if anyone is interested on this call or knows other people who are, uh, please get in touch with us. Uh, and that we will talk to individually to you. Great, thank you, Gaurav. Um, okay, we have another question here. I've noticed three apartment buildings have been built within a block radius, uh, Downey slash Whittier in East LA within the last couple of years. I understand affordable housing is needed, but how is this responsibility being shared with the other 120 plus unincorporated communities and 88 cities in the county. As it has been mentioned, East LA is already severely negatively impacted by freeway pollution and traffic, and the addition of more buildings and people moving to the community has only increased this impact. So I'll um, answer this question um, uh, one at a more um, higher level, I guess, and one more about just um, sort of to bring awareness, I guess, um, to um, specific projects um, that you listed out, for example. So um, ju just so you know that in general, um, the state, um, especially in recent years, um, Sacramento has a lot of um, new state laws um, that really dictate what um, local government, including the county, can um, deny or condition or require public hearing, uh, especially if the projects um, provide affordable housing. Um, so for example, um, one law that has been around actually for decades, but the state really sort of uh, revised it a lot in the past few years is the density bonus law. So that one is basically saying that if the applicant is providing um, affordable housing yeah. units in their projects, and they meet all the criteria in the state law, then the local government cannot deny it. So I do want to bring that up to your attention because in general, there are more and more state laws that actually get into local 
land use and zoning regulations that the county or the city cannot even um, modify, that we need to follow state laws. So to answer your questions, um, you know, there, there are, um, I would say recently, a lot more affordable housing projects just because the state makes things a lot easier for developers, um, particularly affordable housing projects. Um, so, so that's one thing. Um, however, to sort of answer the second part of your question about how the responsibility is being shared by the county and incorporated areas and the ADA cities, um, I'll just briefly mention that um, every jurisdiction in the state actually is required to prepare this long range planning document. It's called housing element. Um, and every jurisdiction in the state is also assigned a number of units. So basically the state is saying that you need to plan for 90,000 units in your jurisdiction in the next eight years. Now plan for meaning um, we don't build housing. So the county doesn't build you know, housing units or the city doesn't, but um, the state law requires us to make sure that through land use regulations, if a developer wants to build a, a housing development, especially an affordable housing project, that the land use regulations would allow the developer to do it. And so I guess um, to sort of answer your question about the fair share of the responsibility, it really go, you know, um, through that housing element um, preparation process. And, and the number of units is really dictated by the state. So that is sort of another way to let you know that um, a lot of these regarding how, you know, the responsibility is being shared or what kind of projects you know, um, should be allowed or approved. A lot of these are dictated by state law. And so obviously as part of this project, what we wanna do is we still need to comply with state law, but in, in area within the legal boundary of state law, what we can do to sort of achieve um, the visions that the communities have. So, so that's kind of the very general explanation of all these things going around in Sacramento. <laughs> Great, thank you, Tina. Um, and I wanted to just point out that there was a question about how to um, join the, the project mailing list or get more involved. And in the Q&A box and the answered questions, we did provide uh, the direct link to join the mailing list. So I wanted to just mention that. Um, and we'll also be featuring it on a future slide as we do some wrap up um, concluding slides. And I just see one more question here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that and then we're gonna go ahead and um, get into some of our concluding slides. So uh, this is from Adolfo Gonzalez uh, and it says, how would this plan be equitable to each of the communities identified? How would we ensure that funding would be spent equally? Uh, that's a great question, Adolfo. Um, does someone wanna take that one? Um, I can I can take the first half of the question and I'll defer to county staff for the for the funding piece. Um, so uh, Adolfo, thanks for the question. Um, the the planning framework that our team will be using to develop plans is to look at each community as its own uh, planning exercise um, to look at the issues that are specific to that community and address those issues in a manner specific to that community. Um, and it may be the case that the priorities of some communities differ from the priorities of others and our planning process needs to respect those distinctions. So I think at the outset, we wanna make sure that our work is granular and that we are not painting planning recommendations with a pretty broad brush. What we also know is that equity is, a, is central to the lives and experiences of all the seven communities. And as we previously explained and illustrated in our overview presentation, we want to recognize that planning recommendations uh, should emerge from a thoughtful exercise of how past planning decisions have affected the lives and prosperity of community members. And any new planning recommendations that we make now, number one, should not do further harm. And number two, should try and in the long term, set in place a mechanism why past harms are undone. And as Tina previously said, it's not just land use, like systemic discrimination and segregation has a very broad history across multiple policy issues uh, that affect 
cities. So we are cognizant of all of this and we will make sure that all our planning decisions are viewed through those particular lenses. And I'll defer to either Tina or Pat for the funding question. I think um, I think with regards to the um, the funding, that'll depend on what kind of implementation program comes as a result of the planning process. So through these conversations, as well as the goals that we identified earlier, um, I think that will determine um, what implementation programs are needed. And I think even um, some of the studies that we're currently doing just as background studies, um, looking at the community profiles, um, uh, the, where the, the needs are, these conversations with the community, I think that will help determine um, how funding is given. And a lot of it too is I think um, the availability of funding. Sometimes um, the county is, is uh, actively all, you know, seeking out grants now more than ever that's being given by the state. And, and uh, so it, a lot of it depends on what's available and what money we can find. Uh, although I, I feel like, um, you know, there's definitely a lot more money available now than before. Um, so we're, we just have to, you know, figure out where and um, where to put the money um, and what's accessible for uh, the projects that the kind of projects that we we need to do because there usually are some restrictions with regards to the funding. Um, so again, I think the better story that we can tell about your communities understanding the needs, you know, the more likely that we're able to um, get some of those funds into the community. So, um, so these conversations, um, the comments that you make are really valuable to us. And even if you know people and you can have conversations with them and and you know you are the communicators of this project we really uh, that would help us as well so um you know you have our um i think on the next slide we'll put up the project email so please feel free we're, we're trying to make ourselves as you know county planners as available for conversations as we can and um I think there are a few of us, who, few people on this call who experienced um, the planning process in Florence Firestone, where you know we really do are trying to keep these conversations ongoing until the plan is finally adopted. So you have the project. Once you have the project email, please feel free if something occurs to you that you want us to th be thinking about. Please always you know send those thoughts to us. So thank you, Pat. Um, okay, I do see one more question that's popped up. Um, it looks like we'll we'll take that one live and then we'll move on to our slides. Um, go ahead, Gora. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. One, I just wanted to acknowledge the thoughtful, considered nature of these set of comments. So these have all been duly noted. And I did want to point out uh, a repeat comment about the CAC. Um, so we want to state up front, the CAC is not a substitute for public input. Uh, we do not view the CAC's role um, in this planning process to be that. Uh, it, it supplements public input, but our goal is to maximize, broaden the voices that we hear from, and CAC is only one small piece of our broader public outreach strategy. Okay. Um, great. Thank you, Gaurav. Okay, so with that, um, we'll go ahead and move on to the next slide, please. Okay, so um, perfect timing for this reminder of the upcoming um, opportunities to stay involved. And again, we, I mean, we really want to thank you all for, for being here today. Um, and this next series of visioning workshops, as you can see, are really going to be tailored and specific um, to each of the seven different communities. So we hope that um, you will attend from your respective communities. Um, you can see here, there are the dates laid out for you, but if you go ahead and go to planning.lacounty.gov forward slash metro area plan, um, that website will get you to um, a lot more project information as well as how to register for these um, upcoming meetings. And we really hope that you'll continue to participate and also encourage um, you know, folks that you know to, to get involved as well. 
Um, also here is a link to the community survey that's also available on the project website. Okay, and um, I think you heard earlier that there are some in-person um, workshops coming up. These are actually upcoming uh, Los Angeles County public health workshops um, relative to um, some pedestrian uh, planning and maybe not necessarily specifically tied to the metro area plan, but we are working on getting our team members, some of our team members to be present during these in-person workshops so that we can be available to provide information, answer questions. Um, and we wanted to just make sure to, to give a plug to these important planning efforts that are going on concurrently with this, uh, with this plan process. Um, so you can see here, um, there is one in um, Willowbrook and West Rancho Dominguez, Victoria coming up on November 6, East Los Angeles, November 13, Florence Firestone on November 20, East Rancho Dominguez on December 4th, and then um, a virtual workshop for all four of those communities on December 9th. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, and I'm just doing a quick check. I don't see any more raised hands or questions. Um, and so with that, we do have this um, brief exit survey we hope that you'll participate in. Um, but before we, we do the poll, I wanted to just check if there were any other closing remarks um, from the team members. So yeah, I just wanna thank you everybody again um, for attending the meeting. Um, your input, it's really important um, to this project uh, because at the end of the day, you you are the community members and um we like we mentioned earlier we do have a series of outreach um activities coming up um as well as the online survey um, you also have our email address in the chat box so if you have any thoughts and comments and ideas let us know um but yeah thank you again for joining us tonight Sorry uh, to interrupt real quick. Could somebody, um, could Dudek put the link to the survey in the chat box also before we finish the meeting? Yes, I'm doing it now, Beth, one sec. Yes, we will, we will do that. And then also just a reminder that you can access the survey um, from the project website as well. But we'll, we'll go ahead and put the, the link to the survey there. Do we already have the project website? We do. The project website um, link in the chat box too, right? Yeah. Yes. All right, it's in the list of answered questions and it's in response to the attendee who had asked for the link in the chat. So the link to the chat is posted there. I will also post the email address for the project as a response to that same request. So they're both in there in the Q&A. Okay, great. Um, sorry. And I went ahead and added the um, link to the survey in the chat to everyone as well. So you can access it either from the Q&A box um, or you should be able to see it pop up in the chat as well to make it easy for you. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Pat. Yeah, and actually I'm gonna add one more thing to the chat. Um, so this just came to me this afternoon. Um, so um, the I think I put, uh, one of the questions had to do with parking in East LA and the chief executive office is doing, um, is concluding a parking study in East LA and is having a meeting about it. So it's gonna be Thursday, November 4th uh, from 5.30 to 6.15. Oh. Yeah, the English version is from 5.30 The Spanish is 6.30 to 7.15. And I put the uh, web link and the access code or the dial-in number all in the chat box. So if you um, wanna hear about the parking study that was recently done in East LA, feel free to join that meeting. Great, thank you, Pat. 
Okay, shall we go ahead and open the exit poll? All right, you should see it up on your screen. Okay, great, and I see people are able to participate here. Um, and while you're answering these, these couple of brief questions, again, just um, we know that uh, time is precious, especially these days, and um, there can be some online Zoom fatigue. And so we just really appreciate you making it out to join us. And um, please, please do consider um, continuing being a part of the process for such the early stages right now. And we hope to see all of you at the future visioning um, virtual workshops. Um, and the in-person workshops coming up through public health and um, continue to, looking forward to continuing chatting with you all um, through this process. So thank you. I do see one raised hand. So let me go ahead and, Lara Solis. Um, yes, you know, I'm trying to copy some of the information you put in the chat, and for some reason it doesn't allow me to copy it. Could you put that in the question Q&A about the November 4th meeting? Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Thank uh, you. Uh-huh. Let's see. But don't close the meeting yet. <laughs> well, I'll wait. Yeah, would it be helpful if because today we have the attendees email addresses right would it be helpful if we just put all the links in one email and we send it to all the attendees can we do that yes we we, we can do it on our end for sure if yeah, the attendees that are way, okay um, yeah. the attendees can also share links yeah. to other community members too we we will do that we will sift through the q a responses and the chat box and make sure that we email you all the information that we provided in those two windows. All right, and I think we can close the poll now. Um, and Sonia, thank you for providing your email. Um, we appreciate that. Through the registration, um, I'm fairly confident that we we have everyone's email address. But thank you for providing that email, and we will um, we will document that and make sure you're included. Okay. And I'm just doing one more check for any questions or comments, and I don't see anything. So with that. Um, I think we'll go ahead and conclude the meeting. And thank you all again for being with us. Thank you, everybody.